Hey guys, thanks for watching as always. Uh, welcome to part two of uh, how to balance a stick bait. Uh, in the previous video, which was part one, we actually looked at the basics of uh, how to get started on making your stick baits. We just looked at small stick baits because they're easier to make. Uh, if you haven't checked that part out, please do so. Uh, today we're actually progressing on to uh, probably a, a much more anticipated topic, which is balancing our biggest stick bait. Uh, it's a much more difficult uh, of a task simply because there's a finer line between uh, stability and instability. Uh, so we're going to have a look at a couple of things. Main thing in this video is going to be the design of the body. Uh, in part three, which will be the next video, we'll be looking at uh, the weighting uh, as well. But today we're just looking at the uh, biggest stick base like this one. So just to get started, um, we're going to have a look at uh, different body designs, which I'll be drawing out on a piece of paper, um, and what it does to um, swimming action and how it works uh, with big stick baits. So, here we go. Now, first of all, guys, the easiest stick bait to balance out would be a, a high-sided flat stick bait, but you don't see those a whole lot around for good reason. Uh, they're terrible at casting. You just can't cast them far enough. Uh, so uh, the GT stick bait market, as well as the tuna stick bait market, is mostly made up of um, very thin rear weighted stick baits, which is also something we're going to be looking at today. So I'm just uh, drawing a straight line to determine uh, where the connection eye and the tail hanger are going to be. And from there, we're just making a design. This is just random. Don't have to copy this over. Um, but I'll tell you a little, about, a little bit about the design itself. Um, first, I draw the back. Um, one thing that makes it easier is if um, the internal wiring sits closer to the belly than it sits to the back, that's already a bit more weight distributed towards the belly. Um, therefore, it's easier to balance it out. So as you can see here, we've got more um, surface area in the design on the back rather than the belly. That is something that you might want to uh, take into consideration when you're designing your swim uh, stick bait. Now we know that most of the good uh, GT stick baits are actually, or tuna stick baits are rear weighted. Um, this allows for a very long casting and also sits tail down in the water, which is, um, well, in my opinion, not always beneficial, but some people swear by it. So that's usually a design that people go by. Um, but either way, we can uh, put some um, weight in the rear. Um, one thing that you have to do, do have to take into consideration, this does not balance out the lure. It doesn't make it sit straight in the water. It's just a, a balanced weight so that it sits tail down and that it's easy to cast. But the balancing itself, um, sit, sitting with the belly down in the water and the back out of the water, um, is not... Um, treated by the rear weight so we'll have to come up with a solution there now the reason why I've put a question mark there is for the belly hanger where are we going to put that um, we'll just see how we go about that we can either depending on the wood that we use um, hang it pretty close to the face we can also hang it a bit further back um, as I said in the last video something that's taken um, well people don't take a whole lot into consideration is the fact that when you use big stick baits you also use heavy hooks mostly uh, the trebles are about half an ounce each um, and that can actually work as your balancing weight I mentioned the different types of woods um, obviously with light woods you have to add more weight to get it to uh, swim properly, dive down into the water, but you actually need less weight to balance it out properly. Um, whereas with um, hot, heavy wood, you need less weight to get it down into the water, but you need a better location of the uh, weight that you're going to apply. So uh, what I would say is with a heavier type of wood, you wanna focus more on placing the belly hook hanger towards the thickest part of the body. Um, if you use a lighter wood, you can actually um, put it further uh, in, a, in a thinner part of the body, a bit further back. 
Um, that's something you kind of have to fiddle around with. There's too many types of woods um, to go over that. Um, if I use a light wood, I generally uh, make sure that the hook is sitting a little bit further back. Um, with, the, with the heavier wood, it's a little bit different. So as you can see, I've just crossed out here um, where the uh, what the surface area is of uh, the belly. And you can see that it's uh, definitely a lot less than the back. So that's going to help you out uh, to balance it out as well. Um, especially with bigger stick baits, it's not a bad idea to add some weight uh, right next to the belly hook hanger. Simply because uh, it's going to be very hard to stuff a lot of weight in the tail. Obviously you want to have a fair bit of wood there as well because it can actually be a weak point. Um, if a, a GT or a tuna actually gets uh, both hook in the uh, lower and the top, top part of the jaw and it crunches down, it's definitely going to split open your stick bait. Something you don't want. You do want some structural strength as well. Now, something uh, that you should not forget once you've made a, a nice look and design is making sure everything is symmetrical. Now, as you may or may not know, most of my stick baits are actually um, two piece. I um, glue two pieces of wood together, carve it out, um, split them apart again to put the internal wiring in. Um, but before you split them apart, I always make sure that everything is symmetrical. Um, I guess this is also where the higher prices of good handmade uh, wooden stick baits come from. Uh, there's a lot of good craftsmanship going in it. It takes a lot of time. Uh, but it's very rewarding once you do actually find a way to have a, a nice swimming, um, good working stick bait. I'm just using 60 grit here to make sure that I uh, get rid of all the bumps. Uh, sometimes you can find a thicker part um, what helps is that it's two piece you can actually use the separation line uh, between the two points and um, send from there look at uh, the symmetry um, as you can see here I've drawn the face on already and it actually helps me as well with uh, finding out that the face is not symmetrical there's more wood on the left side of the stick bed than there is on the right so I have to adjust that take your time with this um, and with many tedious jobs, it's not a bad idea to put your work down uh, for an hour or so, go do something for yourself, have a beer, watch a movie, um, watch YouTube, and um, get back at it again. Because it sometimes it does get a little bit tedious. And there we go, it's a little bit more symmetrical already. I prefer using sandpaper simply because if you carve it, it's easy to carve off too much. Whereas with sanding, it goes a bit slower, but it's a bit more precise. So. But whatever your preference is, if you're good with uh, the knife, you got great carving skills, uh, feel free to do so, obviously. Now, in terms of face carving, um, I've told in previous videos don't use stencils, which makes it a bit more difficult to make it symmetrical. Um, funny enough, if you have an asymmetrical face carving, it actually um, doesn't contri contribute a whole lot to an instable stick bait. Um, as long as you get the, the lines of the, of the body right, if you get equal wood distribution for the rest, a couple of uh, calves difference actually don't make that much of a difference in the face. Um, it's more the volume of wood in relation to the weight and the placement of the weight that is important also guys if you've got any questions in relation to um, what type of wood to use and um, how much weight to add. Uh, I've given a couple of ideas in my last video uh, as to what woods to use, uh, which ones are great to use. Um, I think you can practically make a, a, a swimming stick bait with any wood that is around. 
it's just how you go about it in terms of weight wise and that's why i like to stick with just one wood type because i know the characteristics of it i know the density i know how much weight i have to add um, with the amount of wood that i use um, before i start making a stick bite i always weigh everything out um, I've got rough ratios as to um, how much weight I have to add. Obviously, sometimes it kind of differs per design. Um, sometimes the head is a little bit flatter and pointed down, which makes it easier to dive underwater. Um, but generally, there's a, a very good rule of thumb that you can actually figure out yourself um, how much weight you have to add. Um, fixed weights are obviously internal wiring, and that is fixed on the length of your stick bait. Um, so make sure you take that into account and it's a surprising the amount of um, weight that the internal wiring has um, most of the stick baits that I make actually have uh, more weight added through the internal wiring than through the actual added weight and obviously your hooks are very important um, as I said before uh, you can use big treble hooks as actually balancing out a stick bait. I've got some stick baits in my collection that actually sit flat on the water if they don't have a belly hook and swim perfectly with a treble hook on them. So um, that's just uh, some very important things to take into consideration. Um, other than that, it's um, kind of something you have to figure out yourself. Best thing I can give you is find out a wood that you enjoy working with. Um, if you do intend on face carving you want to have a wood that has a fine grain uh, like polonia wood uh, poplar wood's pretty good too and there's actually a couple of hardwoods that are not too bad to work with either um, but that's something you kind of have to figure out for yourself uh, once you get the ratios in as in for example for every 100 grams of wood i have to add 20 grams of um, weight to get it to swim properly or balance out properly, have the right floating uh, ratio, or if you want to make a sinking stick bait sinking ratio. Um, those are all things that you kind of just have to write down and figure out for yourself. But I do hope that these videos actually uh, do help everyone with some things uh, that they might have to take into consideration. Sorry about the terribly boring uh, videos. I needed some footage to uh, <laughs> fill up the video. Um, there's a lot of information I give through the audio here, but either way, uh, that's kind of helps fill up the video. Also, just as a uh, rule of thumb, if it's the first time making your making your first big stick bait, don't worry about the face carving. It actually takes up way too much time. Uh, for the value that it adds to the lure. Um, key is to figure out first um, what makes your stick bait swim, balance and cast properly. Uh, after that it's all uh, go from there. You can actually start face carving as well. Alright so those were a couple of pretty straightforward design tips. Um, obviously I can't give you the exact numbers on the curve and the angle uh, that all just kind of differs per um, design that you make and also the wood that you use there's just too many variables involved uh, but at least you got the, some good pointers as to uh, what to look for and how to adjust your design it's all a bit of a trial because every design is different so um, just keep trying keep at it uh, follow those pointers and you'll be uh, able to make a, a good big stick bait uh, that you might be able to catch many fish on um, so another thing that I'd like to um, point out is that uh, if you do have a, a successful design, um, the design is good, the weight's good, swim's good, um, record what you've done. Record everything, uh, the weight of the wood, the type of wood obviously, you probably remember that anyway, uh, the amount of weight that you've added, weigh all your terminals, um, so the hooks that you're using, uh, the weight that you've added into the tail, the position, etc. Um, so that you can actually copy that design and actually uh, fiddle around with it a little bit. Uh, there's a little bit of overlap between the topic that we are um, talking about today and next video. Um, you can't really have one without the other. Um, but um, this is like mainly the design part. Um, hopefully next week or the week after we'll be discussing uh, the weighting, the terminals, internal wiring. 
Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of overlap with that. Uh, what we will be discussing is um, what we're doing right now, which is uh, testing out some prototypes. Um, you may have seen some videos on my channel uh, showing the different prototypes that we've been using. We've got a really nice result with these big stick baits, uh, including these ones. But we've got a really nice design that we got going at the moment. Um, and what we're doing right now is fiddling around with um, different weight locations and adjusting them literally like half an inch at a time, um, adding about four or five grams. Um, yeah, ch ch changing up a couple of things. Now these might look like very similar baits, uh, but there's two very key differences. Uh, one is the, the belly hanger has been changed slightly, um, been moved towards the back a little bit more, and the weight that we've added is, has increased a little bit. Um, you wouldn't really notice much of a difference uh, at first sight, but um, well, either way, we'll be talking about this in the next video. But they might have very different results, so it's keep, uh, key to keep that in mind. So I hope those were some uh, handy tips. If you have any questions, as always, just uh, let us know. Um, hope you all are able to make some good stick baits, and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Cheers.